The avoidance of distractive and destructive influences is a test of one's mettle and control in the race of life. But it's what we must do by developing good decision-making and problem-solving skills and inspiring our thoughts and actions by high ideals. Hi there, I'm Adrian Atkinson and on that tip for success, we welcome you to Jamaica Magazine. Coming up on today's pages, a look at how information and communications technology is bringing efficiency at all air and seaports. Plus, where to look for help as you ignite your entrepreneurial spirit and later maritime jobs young people might crave. Sit back and relax for all these and more in our half hour package. didn't like school and mommy used to have to wake me up. Tabla, hurry up. You're going to be late for school. Hey, now that I have a tablet, you don't need to wake me up. Since mommy and daddy bought me a tablet, I use my tablet for all kinds of cool stuff. I use my tablet to read books. I use my tablet to learn about history and science. I use my tablet to help with my homework. I even use it to talk to my daddy at work. Learning is easy and fun with a tablet. Take care of your tablet, use it wisely. The efficiency of moving goods through Jamaica's sea and airports is matching up to global players. This is the case as the Port Authority of Jamaica puts in place an electronic platform that's connecting all operators of organizations that make up the port community. Find out what this is and how it works in this next feature. <laughs> The Port Authority of Jamaica is in the process of establishing a Port Community System, PCS. It's a system designed to create greater efficiency in business processes and increased competitiveness of our industry players. The neutral and open electronic platform will provide for reliable round-the-clock access to business transactions at the ports. The system will also allow for effective tracking, tracing and surveillance of cargo by stakeholders associated with transshipment activity. And where time is of the essence and reducing cost a priority to compete, the PCS is a saving grace. To successfully import items, shipping agents need to first send a cargo manifest to the port community system. This is simply a document detailing all the content in a cargo, ownership and other information on the shipper and receiver. Once Customs approves the submission, the PCS will distribute the manifest to the terminal operator and other government agencies. The importer will pay the shipping agent the applicable freight charges, after which a shipping agent release or validated bill of laden is generated and stored electronically in the PCS. For commercial cargo from importers who have been granted all the required permits and licenses, the customs broker will then submit a declaration C87 form to the customs ASICUDA. A notification will be sent to the client or broker to pay the relevant taxes and fees. The customs broker or the importer also needs to pay storage and handling costs for the shipment to generate a terminal release. This is paid to the terminal operator and is also stored in the PCS. Having generated the validated bill of laden, customs release and terminal release documents, the PCS then generates a final gate pass release. The port community system will also send notifications to the importer that the shipment is ready for pickup. In the case of exporting, the exporter, customs broker or freight forwarder will use the PCS to make a booking request to the shipping agent. The export process starts once the shipping agent sends the booking confirmation along with container number to the PCS. The PCS will then generate the empty release instruction and submit it to the terminal, while empty pickup instructions are sent to the selected freight forwarder. The freight forwarder must then identify the trucker responsible for picking up the empty container. In order to gain access to the terminal and pick up the empty container, the trucker makes an appointment within the trucking appointment system. Once the appointment is validated, a notification is sent to the shipping agent, the trucker and the freight forwarder. The trucker can then proceed with this appointment to pick up his empty container from the terminal. Once collected, the terminal operator sends the number of the container collected by the trucker to the PCS and the information is redirected to the shipping agent 
updating the booking confirmation. Upon receipt of the empty container from the trucker, the exporter or freight forwarder registers the arrival with the PCS. After the container has been stuffed and sealed, the booking confirmation is updated with the container cargo details, which is also redirected to the shipping agent. The exporter or freight forwarder then designates a customs broker to lodge the export customs declaration. Once customs vets the declaration and approves the cargo, they'll send a customs release to the PCS which redirects it to the exporter or freight forwarder. The freight forwarder identifies the trucker in the PCS who will pick up the container from the exporter or freight forwarder facility and bring it to the container terminal operator. When all the terminal gate in authorizations are validated in the PCS, the trucker can then go through the appointment process. Gate in authorizations to access the terminal are customs release, booking confirmation, terminal authorization, and trucker identification. When the trucker picks up the container from the exporter or freight forwarder facility, its departure is registered in the PCS and the trucker can proceed to the terminal gate. Once documentation such as the integrity form and police letter are vetted and entries allowed, the terminal operator sends a gate in report to the PCS. The container may be checked again by customs on the terminal and once completed, it's then loaded onto the exporting vessel and an update sent to the PCS. After the vessel's departure, an export manifest is generated in the PCS and sent to the shipping agent while customs is notified. The Jamaica Port Community System, a single window environment, harmonizing and optimizing port and logistics services through automation, improving security, reducing cost and providing a greater scope for each user to increase competitiveness. Yes, Jamaicans, let's grow what we eat and eat what we grow. Let's celebrate Eat Jamaican Month in November and join us on the 25th Eat Jamaican Day at our Eat Jamaican Expo at Devon House. Eat what we grow, grow what we eat. It's good for our economy. Government is encouraging the rise of a new business owning class, all inclusive of young, bright, vibrant Jamaicans establishing and operating successfully. It's the pathway to a more robust economy with the jobs and higher standard of living. If you're in sync with this exciting vision and have a great business idea, this next feature is for you. <music> The foundations of corporate empires are usually rooted in the minds of young, bright men and women who've dared the risks of becoming entrepreneurs. First, identifying opportunities that can create wealth, products and services that are in demand, and meeting those needs with unique innovation. Planning and establishing a business is no easy task, and operating successfully for any extended period is an even tougher job. But Jamaica's youth entrepreneurship policy and strategy gives young people with good business ideas a chance to operate more thriving long-term businesses and create their own income. Youth entrepreneurship is encouraged by both public and private organizations. It is also being fostered within schools and communities to instill the business bug early. And with more young persons owning businesses, they'd be helping to drive economic development and job creation, all of which can make a difference in the lives of other people. And that explains why support has been growing in areas of financing for startup and business experience. Government over the years has established various agencies for helping the youth set up and run their businesses. The National Center for Youth Development, NCYD, for example, continues to empower youth in entrepreneurship. Both attached and unattached young people are able to benefit from access to information through the establishment of youth information centers across the island and various programs that include training. Government has partnered with organizations such as Jamaica Youth Business Trust, 
to provide venture capital funds for persons under the age of 30, collateral requirement being only a sound business plan and a willingness to accept a mentor from the private sector. There is also the Youth Entrepreneurship Program, YEP, giving school leavers at the secondary and tertiary levels with strong entrepreneurial spirits the benefit of training and access to financing. Youths also have access to various business support services provided by the Jamaica Business Development Corporation, the premier business support organization. From the conception of a business idea, young entrepreneurs can get help through the stages of developing the business, planning, financing, starting, marketing, and growing. Indeed, the window of opportunity is open for all youths to access business support at the highest professional levels. Have you realized that more and more Jamaicans are becoming their own bosses? Think about it. Varying types of companies or businesses are being opened all over the island. But before they could start their operations, they first had to be registered with the company's office of Jamaica, COJ. The process to register a business and a company are not the same. In fact, many believe that a company is the same as a business, but they really aren't. A company is a non-profit or profit-generating commercial enterprise registered or incorporated under the Companies Act, while a business is a sole trader or partnership registered under the Business Names Act. So with that said, we will be differentiating the registration process for each of these two groups for you. Let's begin with how to register a business. For new applicants, you will need to complete and submit the business registration form BRF1 also known as the Superform. You will also need a document verifying the owner or owner's current place of address, such as a driver's license or utility bill. The business owner or owners must present their tax registration number or TRN, an original valid government identification card, and a work permit or exemption letter where applicable. Professional certification is required for some businesses, such as doctors, lawyers, dentists, pharmacists, engineers, architects, surveyors, real estate dealers and developers, custom brokers, hairdressers, barbers, pest control operators, child care and golden age care services. Now the last thing left to do is to pay the necessary registration fees. The registration fee of a sole trader is $2,500. To register a partnership of two to five persons is also $2,500. The registration fee of a partnership of six to 20 persons is $5,000. And the registration of a partnership and a trade name as it relates to a corporation is $3,000 each. After you've submitted all the relevant documents and made the requisite payments, the documents will be verified by the COJ. Then within two working days, you'll receive a certificate of registration. This certificate is valid for three years and the TRN and NIS number of your business will be displayed at the base. Certification ensures that you are registered with the National Housing Trust and Heart Trust NTA. Now, let's move on to how to register your company. There are some company owners who, before registering their nonprofit or profit generating company, reserved their company name. The COJ has made it possible for these persons who may not be able to afford the fees associated with the registration of their company or who are in the process of accumulating the relevant documents to first reserve a name for their company up to 90 days before it's registered. This is a very beneficial opportunity because if you do this, you will 1. Establish that the proposed name is appropriate and available for use. 2. Protect the name from use by others during the 90 days reservation period. And 3. Allow your company assured use of the name for pre-incorporation contracts. So, if you decide to reserve the name of your company and reap the benefits, you will need to do two things. Complete and submit the company's name search and name reservation form, Form 6. And when that's done, you'll be required to pay a fee of $500 for the name search and $3,000 for the name reservation. At the end of the process, 
you will receive a letter advising you of the reservation of your company name. But if you choose to go right ahead and register your company, there are a few things to do. First on the list, complete the Articles of Incorporation form. If you are registering a profit-making company, you will complete Form 1A. But if you are registering a non-profit company such as a church, charity, service club or NGO, you will be required to complete Form 1B. When completing the forms, you should ensure they contain details such as the name of the company with the word limited added at the end, the core business of the company, the classes of shares and the maximum number of shares that the company is authorized to issue, for example, 1,000 ordinary shares, restrictions on share transfers, minimum and or maximum number of directors, names and particulars of the proposed directors and the company secretary, names of proposed shareholders, as well as any restrictions on the business that the company may carry on. For example, the company may not support any political party. All articles will attract a stamp duty fee. Stamping is done at the COJ. The second thing to do to register your company is to complete the business registration form BRF1, also known as the super form. On this form, you will be filling in the required information needed on the principal director, all other directors, the company secretary, registered office, and the projected start date. These details are now mandatory for the registering of a company. The super forms should be signed by all the directors of the company, as well as the person declaring the accuracy of the information submitted on the form. This person must present an original valid government-issued identification or a certified copy of a government-issued identification card on location. The final thing to do is to pay transaction fees. The cost for registration is $24,000 and there is a minimum of $500 for stamp duty. After you've gone through all the steps and made the requisite payments, COJ will verify the documents and then you'll receive a certificate of incorporation within five working days. With the certificate of incorporation, you will also receive the company's TRN and NIS number. The certification ensures that you are registered with the National Housing Trust and Hard Trust NTA. You also get a Tax Compliance Certificate, TCC, which is valid for 90 days. If the time period to get your certificate is too long and you want to register at the soonest possible time, then you can make use of the expedition services offered by the COJ. There's the same-day service which can be accessed at a cost of $6,000 for companies and $3,000 for businesses. Then there's the Next Day Express service, which can be accessed at a cost of $3,000 for companies and $1,500 for businesses. The cutoff time for the Same Day Express service is 9.30 a.m. and 1 p.m. for the Next Day Express service. And that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to contact the company's office of Jamaica for more information by calling 908-4419 or visiting their office at 1 Grenada Way, Kingston 5. Remember, you can access all forms and samples on the COJ's website at orcjamaica.com. Congratulations to you and all the best with your business or company. As a maritime state, Jamaica stands to seize increased economic benefits from the sea and its related activities. Opportunities for business and jobs remain largely untapped. In this next feature, we'll take a look at some careers to go for in the maritime sector. It's a very vibrant market right now. Career Talk has emphasized this reality before, but it bears repeating. The maritime industry offers up a wealth of opportunities for employment options. I chose it because I, I really like it. I tried other schools before and to be very honest, they weren't as exciting. The thrill wasn't there, so I ended up doing this. Today we zone in on some of the more common onboard ship jobs that are available and what you need to know to get started. If you're just starting out in the maritime industry, this is the bottom rung on the ladder. It's one of the lowest ranks on, on board merchant marine vessels and they deal with mainly deck work from the deck department and 
They have no sea time and are in charge of roles such as watch keeping, keeping a gangway watch, chipping and painting the deck, and basic ship maintenance. But there is ample opportunity to work your way up. You can move all the way to captain if you are good enough. And as an OS, you earn anywhere between 800 US dollars per month up to 1,500 US per month, depending on the vessel you are and what company you're working with. And FYI, there is no specific training or certification needed for this. No, just basic training to go on board, like life-saving techniques as they're practicing behind me right now, and similar courses, basic first aid. The able-bodied seaman, AB, is just a step above ordinary and isn't exactly an indication of your physical condition, although just about every job on board a ship calls for being in good shape. He does the same thing an OS would do, except he is certified and he would have had more experience and sea time. He gets more pay, of course, so he gets anywhere between 1,500 US to 1,000 to, 1 to 2,000 US per month. The junior engineer is at the lowest level of the engineering department, but performs critical tasks nonetheless. When you finish your training at the Maritime Institute or any other institute worldwide, and then you start your navigation, you have no sea time, but you like to become an officer. You have to first work as an apprentice engineer. In this position, you typically earn, well, 1,500 to 3,000, depending on the vessel and the company you're working with. And then there's the licensed engineer. His job is ensuring the operation of the entire engine of the vessel. He is the equivalent of the captain for the deck, for the engine department. So he runs the engine department of the vessel. So the chief officer is the right hand of the captain. So the captain has overall responsibility of the vessel. The chief officer is in charge of the deck department. The chief officer is in charge of the bosun, all the navigational officers, and everyone else that works on the deck. He gives them the daily roster of duties, yes. He's in charge of the navigation of the ship and its safety. Now, think about a crew of men and women of whatever size working on a ship for months. What would happen if they are not fed often and well? Ship owners know that is not a scenario you want played out, which is why they hire stewards. That is the chief cook on board the vessel. He's in charge of preparing all the meals. He would have a team at times, depending on the size of the vessel. He would normally have a mess man or maybe two mess men, depending on the size of that vessel. His earning potential is anywhere between 2,000 US dollars to 4,000 US dollars. Remember, whichever maritime job you do seek out, there are some constants. It comes with a high level of discipline. It comes with commitment. Did you know regular physical activity controls your weight, reduces your risk of cardiovascular diseases, reduces your risk for type 2 diabetes and metabolic syndrome, reduces your risk of some cancers, strengthens your bones and muscles, and increases your chance of living longer? Get active, get fit, stay healthy. Up next, top stories making news this week. Hi there, I'm Simone Wolf with your JIS News of the Week. Prime Minister Andrew Holness this week welcomed the IMF Executive Board's approval of a new three-year agreement with Jamaica. It wasn't just the transition between governments that was seamless. We also transitioned into a new IMF program seamlessly. And what that does is to add greater certainty to the environment. The 1.64 billion US dollar precautionary standby agreement will give Jamaica immediate access to 430 million US dollars. On Monday, the central bank gave an update on Jamaica's performance in the July to September quarter and reported that the country's economic fundamentals remained positive. Over the medium term, Growth will strengthen against the background of recovery in key industries and higher foreign and domestic investments. The Bank of Jamaica is projecting the economy to grow by 1 to 2% at the end of the current fiscal year. 
Later in the week, the Planning Institute of Jamaica similarly reported strengthening of the local economy, adding that labor figures for July 2016 revealed the highest level of employment ever for a single month in Jamaica's history. The total number of persons employed as at July 2016 stood at 1,186,900 persons an increase of 39,400 persons relative to July 2015 and represents the highest employment level ever recorded for a single month. Energy Minister Dr. Andrew Wheatley says the acquisition of liquefied natural gas to the energy mix is a significant boost to the country's diversification efforts and economic endeavors. Minister Wheatley was addressing the commissioning of LNG at the JPS Bogue Power Plant in St. James last Friday. As Energy Minister, it is my vision for the sector to have a fit-for-purpose energy architecture that can be the cornerstone of a production platform for delivering the economic growth required by our people and our country. Access to the Riverton City Disposal Site has significantly improved with the completion of concrete paving on the 1.65 kilometers of roadway leading to the area. Local Government Minister Desmond McKenzie called for regular maintenance of the 1.8 million US dollar road project. Despite your best efforts, if you don't maintain what you put down, then after a while, it is going to deteriorate. Ground has been broken for the construction of a new infirmary in Portland. Local Government and Community Development Minister Desmond McKenzie says the project is the first in a series which will also see the refurbishment of infirmaries in St. James, Manchester and Westmoreland. These state-of-the-art buildings are going to be equipped with solar water heating system and lighting. We're going to be using rainwater harvesting to minimize the cost of water. Meanwhile, the local government minister toured the existing Port Maria market on Tuesday and assured vendors that tenders for a new modern facility were with the National Contracts Commission. But I am hoping that the market will, when, when it is finished, it will be able, as I said earlier on, to do the kind of things for the town that the present location cannot do. And finally, students and residents of Greater Brownstown and surrounding communities in eastern Kingston are now benefiting from a computer lab. The $4.6 million community access point site was opened recently. The establishment of this CAP site will increase the sustainability of this community and more than anything else, further enhance human capital by assisting school leavers, school dropouts, as well as residents seeking internet and documentation services in order to gain skills and employment. And those were some of the stories making news this week. I'm Simone Wolf. Experiencing flu-like symptoms such as coughing, fever or runny nose? Has it caused severe aches and pains? Is it difficult to breathe? Have you been feeling dizzy? What about diarrhea, vomiting, or dehydration? If the answer is yes, see your doctor or the nearest health center right away. These are all symptoms of the influenza A H1N1 virus. Be smart, seek medical attention today. And this is where we take our leave on yet another enlightening edition of Jamaica Magazine. We value your feedback, so keep the link through our various social media platforms. Send an email to jamaicamagazine at gis.gov.jm and visit our website, gis.gov.jm, for the latest on government information. Until next time, I'm Adrian Atkinson, reminding you to take care of your health, eat well, exercise, get adequate rest, and make every day a productive one. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.